Well, the impeachment of Nairobi Governor Mike Osonko marks the end for a man who has had his fair share of controversy since jumping into the political limelight. Olive Burrows now looks back at his colourful track record. He is no stranger to controversy. In fact, some may say he thrives on it. An effort to divorce him from the office of Nairobi governor, approving, to borrow a phrase, messy, noisy, and not easy. His road to governor of Nairobi was no different. Boxing his way from Makadara MP, Sonko fashioned himself a defender of Nairobi's downtrodden and forgotten. Everything about him was loud. Thank you, sir. Thank you. He styled himself a generous benefactor, and when he set his sights on the Nairobi governorship, he set his rescue team to work undermining then-chief Evans Kidero. Even as senator, he showed he was willing to physically fight for it, styling himself as a man mad enough to tackle the cartels at City Hall and land grabbers. Even if you're dealing with transparency and accountability, but you shouldn't be dealing with incompetence at the same time. In short, what Sonka has shown us is that Nairobians are capable of electing a dog the position of governor if the dog can bark louder and in a manner that is entertaining. Peter Kenneth and the establishment didn't know what hit them. Sonko was crowned Nairobi governor and the compromise was that he would be deputized by the more polished Polycarp Igade. Sonko himself confessed that he's an incompetent leader and he needed a technocrat in the name of Polycap Igade. Number two, Sonko is a convicted criminal. He confessed to have been a jailbird and to have escaped from prison. I think that alone raises questions around his integrity and suitability to serve as governor. But as governor, Sonko showed he could not play nice with the other children in the sandbox. Igade resigned his post in less than a year and CCs he evaluated as non-performers or insubordinate were habitually shown the door. <laughs> A scorched earth policy that saw him burn bridges with the other elected county officials and even the national government. In famously recording his private conversations before proceeding to release them publicly. In dramatic fashion, the former Shimolatoa inmate was arrested exactly a year ago. A few months later, he handed over county government functions to the national government, a decision he's since regretted. In his own records, Hawa Watuwa State House, while in a confused Napombe Kwanza, by the time I was meeting the president for the signing, I was just zigzag. And with the Nairobi County Assembly voting to impeach him, his goose may be well and truly cooked. Deputy President William Luto of France, I am number three in command. And I think it's now payback time. The people he ridiculed are the people now that he needs his support to be able to survive the impeachment. And sadly, he's not, he's unable to procure that support. And it may take nothing short of a miracle for the lion breeder to beat the odds. Jerusalem, Olive Barrows, NTV. Lo